Okay. okay. Sorry, guys. Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, if I could, Kelly, if I could just once again introduce you and thank you very much for yeah, coming sure. along and presenting this lecture tonight. Um, as uh, everyone would no doubt be aware, technology has completely overturned the way that law is studied. It's given rise to having courses like this online. And um, back in the 70s, when I was doing study in uh, law libraries, uh, it was all done by paper, of course. And uh, I, re I recall on one occasion uh, having my confrontation, if I can say that word, with the uh, law lecturer when I was um, being very studious and working through my lunch hour, having lunch at my desk and uh, feeling the very strong grip of the law librarian on my on the back of my neck, uh, saying that um, there are two types of two types of rodents in the law library, ones that uh, uh, eat their lunch at their desk and the others that uh, eat the scraps afterwards. So I was promptly escorted out. So things have changed very much. So, that, that is very different now. <laughs> right. So thanks very much, Kelly. If I could just hand it over to you and... Uh, and I'll interject at various times. Yeah, no problem. That's okay. Yeah, no, I was just thinking the, the library world's changed a lot, um, even just in the last 10 years. So um, we've, uh, yeah, it's definitely a different space to be in. <laughs> now, I see John's online as well, and I think Raymond too. So that's great. Um, so what I'm hoping to do today, and feel free to interrupt and ask questions as we're going along, I'd like to um, introduce you to our, I guess, the five databases that um, I certainly direct students to and I use myself, um, and look at the database as well as what are the kinds of resources that are in each of them. Because what I do find is that when people are starting out, they may be going to a database, and it certainly may be a law database, but it might not contain the information that they need. So you, you need to know the databases that are there and what's in them. Okay, mm -hmm. so just to make your searching a bit more targeted. Um, okay, so let's have, I'll just share my screen. One second, guys. Okay. Okay. So hopefully what you can see is the um, the library homepage. Has everybody been able to see that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, excellent. Okay. So I thought I'd start at the library homepage just to show you how to get into the databases. Certainly there are links available um, through Moodle, but if, if you can't find the link, at least if you know what the library homepage looks like and how to get into the databases, it might make it a little bit easier. So what I thought we'd start off with is Ostley. So we'll go into all library databases. Okay. Now there is a link to Ostley. There's browse for databases by title, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to click on the letter A. Now Ostley is. Thank you, Kelly. Yes. We can. I can't see the um, the page. All I see is blue and the logo of the Secure University. Yeah, same with me. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's all I can see too. Okay. Let me just stop it. I'll just stop the share for a moment. I'm going to open up another. Okay, so we'll try again. Okay. Okay. That's better. That's better? Yes. Okay, yes, excellent. Yes. Okay, a bit of a hiccup. I'll go back to the library homepage just to show you in again. Okay, so you should right. have the library homepage there. Right in the middle of the page is a big green box called Discover It. But for the databases, if you go into, under more search option, options, there's a link to all library databases. Yep. We're starting with Osley, so we go to A, underneath Browse for Databases by Title. Now, Osley is a great resource for a number of reasons. I guess one of the big ones, of course, is that it is free. So um, you'll be able to access this after you graduate as well, hopefully. Um, so I'm just going to click on Osley. Okay. 
Okay, so um, I believe quite a few of you have had a bit of a look around Ostley. Um, so what I'll point out are some of the areas that I've found particularly useful. First of all, uh, you'll notice at the top of the screen that there's a search box. So this works very similarly to um, search engines like Google. You can put in your keywords and click search and you'll come up with a list of resources. That's searching across all of the, um, all of the Ostley databases. So it is, it is a very big search. There's a couple of other um, types of search that you can try as well. So we've got the advanced search. So if you click on that, that's just below the um, search box. And this is where you can specify particular databases that you're interested in searching. Um, and you can select multiple databases just by holding down the control key. So that's pretty um, one of the standard features in a lot of databases that you can search across multiple um, areas. So just going back, the other resource I wanted to point out was um, Law Site, um, and this is um, this is an Australian law site case citator, which is I think very useful. So I was I noticed that one of the cases that you were looking at, I think there's a link in Moodle itself, is um, Doolan versus the Legal Practitioners Board. So what I thought I'd do is just um, do use that as an example. So what we can do is we can use the citation itself or we could um, put the parties in as well. So sometimes you might only have part of the, the um, citation. So that, that can be handy if you can just plug in the things that you do know. So I'll just put in QCA 43. So it's the Queensland Court of Appeal. And I'll put Doolin in the parties box. And we'll just see what comes up. Okay, so I've got the, the resource there. Um, the good thing about this is now the link, the citation underneath the names, you can click on and that will take you to the Ostley um, case, case report in Ostley. The other thing you've got here is you've got the legislation cited, so you can go directly mm. to the Act in Ostley or you can go to the um, specific provisions that are dealt with in that case as well. So that can be a really handy um, uh, resource there. So has anyone ever used this um, law site in Ostley yet? I tried it this afternoon and uh, I found that it, it was a little bit particular about spelling and yeah. if you misspelt something then um, it didn't really want to talk to you. Yes, and, and that is actually something that you'll come up with um, uh, quite a lot in the different databases in that you have to be very exact with uh, how things are entered. Um, Sometimes um, they'll have a helpful thing and they'll say, you know, have you considered this? Um, but not all of them do that. So, okay. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the Ostley page. Sorry, if I could just interrupt there for a moment, just to be very pedantic about something. I prefer if we don't use the designation or sound verses um, when talking about a case. And generally, we would talk in terms of, say, in this instance, Doolan and the um, admission board or Doolan against rather than the word versus. Oh, okay. Uh, to pick up on something that you uh, said earlier. Yep, no hassles Sorry at to all. Be pedantic. No, that's all right. Thanks, no Kelly. problem. Okay, so let's have a look now at, um, you'll see over in on the left-hand side, there's a cases and legislation box. So this is something that I, I find quite useful. Um, you can go into, you can certainly search across all of the jurisdictions, but you can also go into a particular state or the Commonwealth side of things as well. So I'll just um, click on the Queensland section. So you can see there's actually quite a lot of um, judgments up there as well. So, you know, we've got the Supreme Court of Queensland. So this is something that we looked at a little bit last week. Um, but this is a, just a wonderful resource. We've got the Queensland Consolidated Acts. So just click on that. And if you have a particular um, act in mind, you can then go into it. So I was looking at um, the Judicial Review Act. So I just went into J. And then we've got the Judicial Review Act 1991. And um, 
John spoke about this last week about the note up facility in Ostley. Um, so if you're looking at, um, if we go down to say part three, the statutory orders of review, I'm just clicking on um, 20. And by clicking on my note up, the official thing is that this will search automatically for uh, all materials on Osley which refer to this section. So it's, it's good in that it'll point you to other the resources relating to a particular case or um, sorry, to a particular legislation or cases that look at it. Okay, so I'm just going back to the Osley homepage. Okay, so I just click on the Osley icon that'll always take you back to the to the main page, which is really handy. Something that I do find that people miss is the libraries section underneath the cases and legislation section. There's it's divided into the different well, into some of the different kinds of um, law. So uh, one of the uh, sections there is the aviation law. So if I just click on that to show you what it looks like. It just enables you, it puts all of the different resources relevant to that particular type of law and it enables you to search them at one time. So that might be something that could come in handy. Okay. The other thing in the library section is that we've got a law journals link and Osley has made quite a number of Australian law journals available through their service. So you'll see that if I scroll down, there's a lot of the um, there's a lot of things like university reviews um, and other different kinds of material there. So you can see it's quite extensive, and my understanding is is that it that is something that's going to grow as well. So what we can do is we can do a search for. Um, on a particular topic or particular piece of legislation or a particular case. So if I click on select all, just so I'm, I'm searching across all of the law journals in Osley, from here I can actually do a search. So I might do um, a search for academic misconduct. Now this works in the same way that a lot of databases work in that if you're doing, if you're using a phrase, if you enclose it in double quotation marks, that just forces the database to look for those words as a phrase rather than two separate words. So I'll just bring this up. Okay. okay. And you'll see that um, there's 26 results that have come out of that. So there's 26 articles that have got the phrase academic misconduct in them. And you can see that Osley um, gives a percentage based on what, um, with their algorithm and, and what they consider to be um, the most useful. So there certainly may be some articles in there if you're um, covering a particular area that you might find useful. Okay. So we might move on to one of the other databases. Did anyone have any questions about Osley? No? Okay. Okay, well I'll go back to the library homepage. So, so I'm just, just check that you can all see the library homepage again? Yes. Yep, excellent. Yep. One question, Kelly. Usually when I um, try to find uh, information about a case, I go to the subject and I click on law. Yes. And it gives me only five um, databases. Not, not. I've never tried to, you know, use the, uh, the alphabet at the top. Yeah. Um, is it is it better to use the alphabet? Do, do we get more resources no. that way, or would they be irrelevant to the law um, subject? There's a lot of databases that we have that won't have any um, relevant to law relevance to law, or they there won't be a lot of legal content. Um, mm -hmm. So if we go into that all library databases link again, mm -hmm. um, that's I'm using the browse for databases by title, but yeah. we we do have the browse for databases browse by subject. Yeah. yeah, and you can go into law, and if you have a look at that, there's quite a lot of 
legal databases listed. Now, I know that um, that can somewhat sometimes be confusing because there is so many. So I guess that's why I'm sort of pinpointing only five of them. Um, okay. There will be content in others, but certainly these are kind of the main ones. But there's no actual right or wrong way how you access those. Mm -hmm. So if you work better accessing it from this particular page, that's, that's fine. They're listed there as well. Okay. 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 Okay, that's great. So we'll go and have a look at um, LexisNexis AU. So LexisNexis is a database, um, is, a, is a big legal database. We have, the main things that we have access to in LexisNexis is some reference um, resources, so dictionary and an encyclopedia, which I mentioned last week. Um, we've got some commentaries and we've also got access to case law as well. So um, I thought I'd go through those. Now in terms of the reference resources, we've got the um, Halsbury's Laws of Australia as well as the Encyclopedia um, Australian Legal Dictionary. So they can be quite handy, um, especially if you're just trying to get a, a feel for the area or you've got a particular word that you'd like to, to look up. So if I go into the Encyclopedic Australian Legal Dictionary, you'll notice that there's a few links um, beside each of those databases listed there. So there's the little eye icon. Now that will actually tell you more about the resource. So um, if you're not quite sure whether you're searching in the right place, have a look there and see whether it covers what you're after. You can also browse. There are options to browse through these um, resources too. Generally I find searching is better but um, it's one of those things that um, each person is different so you could certainly have a go and see what suits you best. So I'll just um, go into the Encyclopedic Australian Legal Dictionary. Okay, and you'll notice that it's listed the uh, dictionary as the source and from here you can actually put in a phrase or a word. So if I put in plagiarism, for example, I can click on search. Okay. Now there are five results coming up for that particular term. So I can go, I can look through each of those. I'm just going to cl click on the um, bottom one since that actually has the, the title plagiarism. Okay. But the good thing about searching encyclopedias and dictionaries, especially at the beginning, is it gives you other ideas for terminology that you may not have considered. So um, academic misconduct, um, that kind of wording that you may not have come up with. So that can be really handy. Also, um, if there are links to other material that we have in the database, you can click on through to that as well. So I'll just go back. Okay, so if I show you academic misconduct, okay, and you can see that it highlights the word just so you can see where, um, um, where the keyword that we've searched is. The other thing is um, you'll notice that in this particular entry there's uh, references to cases, there's also references to legislation as well, so that might be um, some good places to look. Okay, I'm just going back to the home page of LexisNexis again. And I'll show you Halsbury's Laws of Australia. What you'll notice is because all of these databases are on the one platform being LexisNexis, they all look very similar. Um, they've tried, they definitely do try to keep things uh, standard. And so there's, there are some further options that are available and that's the same with um, the other databases on LexisNexis. Um, each will be slightly different but, but hopefully if you, if you learn one, it can lead on to helping you with the others. Okay. So I'll just do academic misconduct here. Now I'm not using double quotation marks here because you'll see just under the box it's told me um, how I can use my phrase. I don't need to actually enclose them with double quotation marks. Okay, so I might click on 
the last one for example. Okay, and there are links through to cases there as well through Hallsbury's. Mm. Kelly, could I just ask if you had put that in double inverted commas, how would it have come up and what would the difference have be? You know, I'm not sure. Let me go back and we'll try it. Okay. I don't think, sometimes it'll just do the same search. It won't make a difference. Other times you might get an error message. So it's come up with three as well. So it doesn't look like there's any disadvantage to using it. Okay, okay so if I go back to um, LexisNexis, is there any questions about Hallsbury's or encyclo the encyclopedia? It's probably a case of playing with those and seeing the content that might be useful for you. Okay, so just pointing out um, some of the the other the different commentaries that we we have available through LexisNexis. Now, some of them are divided according to the type of law. So you'll notice that there's, for example, the Australian Administrative Law, and once again, that will be very similar in the in the way you search it. Um, sometimes it's also um, the jurisdiction will come in as well. So you'll notice that we've got the Civil Procedure Queensland. Um, databases there as well. So that will specifically deal with um, Queensland. So the commentaries will often be divided in, in that way. So all of the, these are the ones on under my favourites are, are all of the, the databases we have. I know that there's a, a show more sources at the bottom of that screen, but we, we have all of ours listed there. So clicking on that, there's no benefit of doing that. Okay. okay. So if I go from here, the, uh, the next bit I wanted to point out was the case law resources that we have on LexisNexis. Um, I guess the two, the, the main ones are we've got the case base case citator. Um, so this will, this lists um, case citations and we've also got unreported judgments across um, all of the Australian jurisdictions. So what you can do with case law, I, I don't tend to go into um, case base or even unreported judgments. I tend to do my searching from the quick find box on that front page. Now if I was looking for that um, Doolin case, I can just type it in and the really good thing is that it will, <coughs> it will actually yeah. start listing them for me. It just makes it a little bit easier if I'm trying to find the case that I want. Okay, and it goes on through. So this is the entry for the case in case base. Uh, you can see that there's um, the catchwords and the digest is is the bulk of the citation there. We've also got the legislation considered by the case. Um, the good thing is that up here, we've got a link here, the BC number, that's a link through to the, to the case report in unreported judgments. So if it's got a BC number, that's always got a, a bit of a thumbs up, you know you're going to have a, um, a case report there. Okay. Um, John, I wasn't sure if you wanted to make um, a comment about these reports versus, say, an authorised report series or or anything like that. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, well... Um, if we will can keep going, um, but certainly there are case reports, um, as I said, available through through LexisNexis. So you do have that. And if you're looking for, um, I guess the the source, you can always find that at the bottom of the report. So you'll notice over in the bottom left hand corner, we've got unreported judgments, Queensland. So we know where that that case report has um, come from. Okay, so um, 
Okay, and the other thing I wanted to mention about LexisNexis, and this is something that you can get through other databases as well, um, LexisNexis actually has um, the abbreviations. I, when I was first starting looking at um, legal resources, I noticed that there's a lot of abbreviations, So, um, and sometimes sometimes they made sense, and other times it was you got a bit lost. If you go from LexisNexis, there's a help um, up in the top, right hand corner okay and there's an abbreviations link so sorry I'm not sure if this is actually if you're able to see this on my um, on, on this particular screen but if you as long as you know that if you go into help in the top right hand corner there is a link to abbreviations and I just find that really handy so how are we feeling about LexisNexis? Okay. It's, a bit, it's right. a bit daunting at first because you don't always know what you want to search for. Yep. But certainly this is uh, explaining it. I had a, quite a play around with this afternoon with some of the cases that were cited in the notes and most of them found quite easily except the, um, the one regarding... Um, well, where is it? Versus the electoral board, um, Roach versus electoral commissioner. Um, I, I couldn't seem to locate that very easily. I did in the end, but okay. um, the others were were okay. But that one wasn't. John, were you using the quick find um, box on the front page of LexisNexis? Uh, I, I did. That's how I found it. Okay. Yeah. In Ostley, I couldn't seem to get it with the the, refer the citation that was given. It yeah. didn't seem to um, come up. But, yeah, so I went to this one Excellent. and did find it. Yeah, I mean, certainly sometimes you can see the names written differently in different resources. So, um, yeah, yeah, so it can be a little bit touchy and you sort of have to play with it. To, to get the, the result that you need. But definitely that case by name or citation box, I've found that to be really useful. Um, I was saying before I didn't, I started, um, before a few of you came in, that if you are coming across looking for a case and you can't find it, um, I'm more than happy to, if you want to send me a citation and I can do hunting and at least confirm that we don't have it. Um, or hopefully, confirm that we do have access to that and I can send that through to you. So don't be afraid to um, get in contact with the library about that or me, me specifically, but the other librarians as well. Okay, well, if everyone's okay with LexisNexis, we'll go back to, I'll just go back to this page. So we're back on the databases by subject um, page. The next database I wanted to point out to you is Westlaw. Um, so I'll just click on it. Now, you may have come across this already um, by the name of Legal Online. Westlaw is the new platform, but essentially it's the same content, um, but it is certainly very different in structure. So can everybody see Westlaw? It should be a blue banner at the top of the page. Yes. It, yeah, we yeah. can see it. Yes. Okay. Um, I, I find some of the, the navigation in Westlaw a little bit tricky, um, which I'll, I'll show you as we're going on. Now, we do have a cases link in Westlaw, but we don't have any of the full, full, text, full text case law in Westlaw. So when you search first point, it's a case citator. So you will find information about the case, but you won't... You, you won't be able to find um, a case report in there as such. Um, so I know that we're, we don't have an awful lot of time. So what we might do is move on to the, um, the other two kinds of resources because I think they're going to be more valuable. When it comes to case law, I tend to not use Westlaw and I use LexisNexis simply because LexisNexis has the full text. Okay. So we'll have a look at the legislation. Where it, I get a little bit lost is at the bottom of the page, you'll see that there's um, cases, legislation and commentary and journals. To find out what commentaries we have, you basically have to drill down 
And so you go into product title, then you go into Australia, and then it will tell you the three commentaries that we have on West law. So we've got the Australian um, succession law, we've got expert evidence, and we've got the, the Queensland Building Service there as well. So they're the three commentaries that we have. Just to show you um, the kinds of things that that's in it, I'll look at expert evidence. So I'm just going to click on it. And you'll see that there are different chapters for different areas. So, for example, if I was interested in the chapter 13, um, the police evidence, I can go in there, click on it. Okay. And the idea is it works somewhat like a, a print book. So it's sort of just getting your head around it. So if we go to the introduction, so I'm just going to click on here. Now, the idea is that you can then use um, these arrows next to document to scroll through the book as such. So if I click on that, just to show you. So this is more or less, I guess, different paragraphs. Some of these are, are much longer as well. Okay. And you can see that um, we've got links in this particular data database as well to other material that's in West Law. But keep in mind what I said before, that there isn't any full text case law in West Law. Um, the, if there, these links go anywhere, it'll be just to the citation. Now that can be interesting and there's some useful information there. If I just click on one, I'm not quite sure if it'll go through, but we'll see. It will give you some useful information there. Certainly there's, you've got the digest and then we've got the cases citing and other information like that, but there won't be the actual case reports as such. Okay. Okay. So one of the, the big benefits of Westlaw, and I'm just going back to the home page. is that we have a subscription to um, about a dozen legal journals um, through Westlaw. So if I click, I'm just going to use the little plus arrows to click down again. Okay, so we've got the journals listed there. Um, we also have access to the Australian Legal Journals Index. Now, that actually indexes or um, provides citation and description about um, 400 journals, but we obviously in this particular database only have access to, I think there might be 11 actually. Um, so what you can do though is if, if a particular article interests you, you can then go to the library's homepage and see if we've got a full text um, access that way. So I'll show you um, discover it a little bit later, um, but that is one way of seeing if, okay, well, we don't have it through Westlaw, but we might have a journal article through one of our other subscriptions. So when it comes to journal articles, once again, if you're not sure whether we have it and you've had a look and not having any joy with it, just send it through and I can at least confirm whether we have it or we don't have it. Okay, so what we can do if we wanted to do a um, search is we can select the journals that we want to search. So we could select all in this case. Okay, and then if I'm say looking for um, uh, anything that might have juris jurisprudence in the, in the title of the article, And I can, you'll notice that underneath that search box, you can, you can um, click on free text. That means it'll search across um, all of the articles or all of the information that we have, or you can limit it to say title, which I'm going to do in this case. So I'll click on search and just show you what comes up. Okay. Okay, so we've got 40 documents that have come back. So there are 40 um, articles in that we've searched, sorry, in the journals that we've searched that have jurisprudence in the, in the title of it. So 
you can what you can do then is you can actually click on it and just have a look at what the what the articles look like. You'll notice that it uses the footnoting system as well. And if you hover over the footnotes, it'll tell you, give you some more information. So it'll tell you, um, it might point you to a particular resource, but sometimes it also gives you um, some inf additional information as well. So that can be quite handy. You've also got options here that you can email it to yourself and print it. So those are kind of the, the standard stuff that most databases have. Okay. So any questions about Westlaw? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Well, let's have a look at another, another database that's actually quite different. Um, so we'll go back here. The database is CCH Online. Okay, so it's a white and blue screen. You probably see IntelliConnect in the middle of the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Um, CCH is a publisher that traditionally has had a, a real business focus. So we've got quite a lot of inf um, resources on he in here that are more for business students, I guess. But there are, it is something that is growing in the legal field and... Um, I think it's um, something that we may have not always um, used as much as we could do. You'll notice that there is a search option at the top of the screen. So if you were to put some keywords in there, it would search across, across all of the resources in CCH. Um, what you can do, though, rather than that is we've got practice areas coming down here over on the um, left-hand menu. Um, and there's quite a lot that I think will be relevant in your course of study. So I thought I'd just choose um, the family law area just to point out, show you some of the resources under there. Um, like Westlaw, it's got a lot of the little plus signs next to things to open up um, areas. Okay, so there's family law, um, and you can see that the, it's got a variety of information there. We've got uh, cases, commentary, um, legislation, so there's quite a lot of material there. There certainly are other areas that are, um, don't have nearly as much resource in that particular area, but we've got quite a lot of family law resources. So this works in, the, in a similar way in that you could select um, one or, or two of the different um, resources, or you could select all of them, and you could search across just those family law resources. So it's in a similar way. Um, so for example, I've, I've selected the sources I want to search, and now I can just pop in my keywords at the top of the screen. So if I put, say, um, uh, child abduction, just to show you the kind of resources that the results that we'll get. Okay, you'll see that there's um, sorry about that. There are the results are listed in in the centre of the screen, is in the centre box, so to speak. There's 474 results. Okay, now that's a lot of material, and you certainly. Um, won't necessarily want to go through all that. Uh, what you can do is you could add another keyword, um, but the other thing you've got is you've got ways of narrowing your results. So you can have a look um, by jurisdiction, so you could limit it to a particular jurisdiction in Australia if that was important. Um, the other one that I find really useful is the by document type as well. So if you're really um, mainly focusing on the cases, then you could say click on on that and that will take everything else away and it will just present the cases that they have in the ones that we searched. So what we can do then is, um, I'm just gonna click on number six, just to show you what comes out. Okay, and you'll notice that a new box has appeared. So we've got the, the limiting or the narrowing options over the left, we've got the search results in the top box and then in the bottom box is the actual resource that we've clicked on. And we can drag 
these boxes to however we want, whatever's easiest. So if I still want to see some of these boxes, but I want most of it to the screen um, to be the actual uh, report, um, then I can do that. The other good thing is that there's a court ready PDF, so you can click on that. It's much easier to print than if you were, were planning on printing just this box. And also there's links in there too. So you can kind of see the, some of the similarities between, between our databases. Okay. Um, now I'm just going to click on home. You'll notice there's a little house in the bottom, I'm sorry, the top left hand corner. Just one thing I wanted to point out is that you can actually get a list of all the titles in CCH up here. There's a titles A to Z and if you just click on that, it just lists everything that we've got. So that's just something to keep in mind um, that, you know, if, if it doesn't work for you, this doing it by um, practice area, you can certainly get a list of all the different resources we have in CCH. So any questions about CCH? It's all a little overwhelming at this stage. Yeah, <laughs> look, there is, um, you know, it's a case of getting in and playing with it and don't, I guess, not feeling like you have to do all of this at once. I mean, today this is really introducing you to five different databases that we have access to and how they um, are different from each other, but there are similarities as well. So, and, and just making um, time when you have it to go in and have a bit of a play and see what's there. And, and I'm always discovering new stuff in these databases. They are um, a resource that is constantly evolving. That's what the publishers do. They want us to keep um, purchasing them so they, they keep them um, updated and they, they try to make it as easy as possible. So um, yeah, just get in and, and have a bit of a play and don't be scared. You can't break anything. And Kelly, it's uh, John. Yes. If um, the students want to um, undertake a research project, do you have any recommendations on where they should start? Should they go to Wastley first or should they go to LexisNexis? I guess, I guess it depends on the assignment, it, like the, the area itself. Um, generally, I find LexisNexis is my port of call and Ostley. I tend to go there and, and even just doing general searches on an area just to see what comes back. Um, they would certainly be my first first places to check. I think I mentioned last week that they'd be the first two places I go as well. Yeah, and, and I'm sorry, I, I did. Yeah, sorry, Kelly. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you were saying? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, the other uh, the other databases like Westlaw, um, CCH. There's some wonderful material on them, but I think um, especially when uh, if you're wanting to sort of get a start, um, LexisNexis and Osley are a good place to go. Uh, the, the trick is that there's so much information that it's, it's not getting overwhelmed by it. Um, and, uh, and before you asked a question about the authorised versus the unauthorised. Um, yes. Um, and generally speaking, of course, if, if you go to an authorised source, that will carry more weight if there was any concerns. But um, I'm not aware of um, courts that will uh, not hear from you if you're quoting from an unauthorised source. Excellent. And I understand, I understand Ostley is not an authorised source, but it's very widely used and um, is regarded as authoritative, even though it may not be necessarily authorised. And I hope I'm not saying something that's unfair to Ostley by making that comment. Um, but uh, the um, other thing is, that uh, there is such a wide range of research areas available or research materials available that um, students need to be aware that you can't simply rely upon secondary sources alone such as textbooks or text notes yep. but you do need to go to the primary sources um, <coughs> and read the cases and i think i made that comment last week as well mm. thanks kelly oh that's all right certainly there's um so much information on the court websites. I mean, that's also another wealth of information. They've they've really tried to make things transparent, and they do put up um, a lot of judgments and and those kind of things there. So that's another place that's good to have a bit of a, a hunt through. 
Okay, well, um, I think we've gone through four, so we're down to Lexus.com. Now, I've left this one to the last because this is the database that I find most hard to navigate and it does tend to be the last place I check because I do find it quite difficult. That said, um, sometimes it might be the only database that has what I want in it. So um, it's got some it's got some case I've found cases in there that I haven't been able to get through Osley or LexisNexis AU, but I have been able to get through Lexis.com. So it is there. Um, and there is some good stuff. I guess if I show you, we'll go into it. Um, now Lexis.com is the um, American parent company of Lexis Nexus AU. So if you keep in mind that it is a um, it's an American product, it's certainly in no way geared for um, outside of the US. There's lots of material from um, relating to different countries, um, but it does it certainly is its focus is the the US. Now, if you have a look, um, Lexis, it's a white and red page. Hopefully, everyone can see it. Mm -hmm. okay. So, there's two things to point out on this page, and that is that we actually, for Australian material, we need to go through foreign law because, of course, it's a US product. So, for them, Australia is foreign. So, we'll click on that. And what you'll see is there's a whole um, ream of different... Um, countries there. So when you're looking for cases, um, information about other countries, then Lexis has got um, a good deal to offer there as well. So I'm just going to click on Australia. Okay. Now the two areas that Lexis.com can help us is the case law and journals. So they're the two areas that they've got. So we've got um, We've got reported cases and we've also got the unreported judgments as well. So when it comes to searching um, for case law, what you can do is you tick the boxes. So you'll notice that the Australian reported cases um, browns out and that's simply because all of that all of those sources are actually in the Australian Commonwealth State and Territory case law. Okay, so if we were doing a journal search, it's just a matter of clicking on the Australian Law Journals combined. So if you're wanting to know what um, law journals are covered under here, it's just a matter of clicking on the little eye icon. So that's um, similar to other databases. It really just means information. So if we click on that, and then if you click on Search Selected, it takes you to a search screen that is rather different than we've seen so far, um, it's not a matter of, well, you certainly can just um, type some words into the terms and connectors box, but the, e the better way of doing it, I find, is by using this uh, restrict by document segment box. So if we were looking for, um, say, uh, journal articles on child abduction, what we can do is select a segment and we might say title. Okay. And we might put in child abduction. And then we need to click the little add box. And what it does is it moves the, um, I guess, the algorithm into the box. Okay. And then we click search. So the same process is um, what we would do with case law, except that say uh, we were looking for that Doolin case, we would select name and Doolin and make it go up to the terms and connectors box. So it is very different um, to what to the other databases. So and also you'll see that these are the the re, um, cert, the results screen, and there's eight results, and it doesn't come up very friendly at all. Um, I'll just click on one to show you. The other thing is that um, the actual presentation of the journal articles aren't all, isn't all that easy to um, read it either. You can see that it's um, not the friendliest of presentations. Uh, 
I guess the, the main reason that we keep Lexis.com is that we, we have access to some of the case law that we don't have in other places, but it also provides us with access to some of the journals that we don't have in other places as well. So that's why we do keep it. There's a, a torts journal that is only available through here. Um, so we, we keep our subscription for that reason. But just bear in mind that it isn't the friendliest database. I'm just going back to the Lexis homepage and I just want to show you one more thing. Now, we, have, we went through foreign law. The other option, if you have a particular uh, report series, for example, you're interested in, you can go to find a source. So if you're looking for a case, for example, that was, um, that was published in the Australian Law Reports, you could um, type in Australian Law Reports come up because I was looking for it before. Click on find. Okay. And you'll see it comes to a list. I can see the Australian law reports are there. If I go into the information box, it will tell me what years are covered. I can click on the box, click on search selected, and then I'm going to be taken to that search screen again. Um, and I'm searching Australian law reports now. So um, there was a, a case I was looking for um, and one of the people um, surnames was Chai so I'm just going to put that in here so you can see that and I can do a search this is a, um, a High Court of Australia case from 2002 so I'm just going to see if I can find it and in this case this was the only um, the only report that met that that search query. So, um, yeah, as I said, with Lexis.com, certainly it, it's not easy to navigate, but sometimes it does um, provide information that some of the other databases might not. Okay. So that was really um, what I wanted to cover today. Did anyone have any questions or comments? No, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, all we have to do is watch the video again and take notes, I think. Um. Yes. I'm sure it's one of the things that the more you actually do use the, yeah. the sites and site, the more you're going to um, find it's easy to navigate around. Yeah. It's just a matter of practicing and, and, and you know using them over and over and over again. Mm. and. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it is, and and just being aware that um, it you may not be able to um, what's the word? You may not be able to find things straight away, and it's just working through that process of okay, well, which databases might have what I'm after, and knowing that okay, well, um, Westlaw probably isn't going to help me so much because it's. Um, if I'm looking for a, a full text case report because we don't have access to, through Westfall. Um, so yeah, it's sort of just getting to know them a little bit better. And then, as I said, if, if you're coming across things that you're really not sure whether we have or we don't, um, just um, send me an email, give us a call and, and we can check for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kelly, um, I was interested to hear before that Ostley is not authorised. Do you recollect John mentioned Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm very surprised uh, about that. It's um, a lot of the... Uh, some of the some of the information comes directly from the courts themselves. Um, right. But I guess in terms of things like, um, I'm just thinking, and John, correct me if I'm wrong about this, but I know that um, like with legislation, it's, you know, the, the versions that are available through the, the parliamentary websites, um, you know, in the, I guess in the PDF versions of what you would have in, in traditional sort of law libraries, um, um, you know, they're more authorised than the, the text-based versions that are available through Ostley. Um, yes, I think that's the case. Now, I don't want to, for a moment, to discourage anyone from using Ostley. In practice, I use Ostley all the time. That's, yeah. that's the one I use. 
rather than the parliamentary source. But I understand, and I may stand to be corrected on this, and it may be that my information is dated, but there is potential for a slight lag between um, what is on the authorised parliamentary uh, legislation website and what is on Ostley. Now, in practice, I don't think there's any difference at all, but just technically, I think there is that potential for a slight lag. But I wouldn't discourage you from using Ostley. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's a, it's a wonderful resource and uh, very, very user friendly. Yeah. Some people prefer the parliamentary legislation website, but I just find it quite tedious because it's in a PDF form and you don't have the links, so you're not able to use the shortcuts. It takes a lot longer to legislate, particularly if you start looking at things like Commonwealth legislation, having to, you know, just laboriously cursor down the page um, rather than being able to use those quick links. So, yeah, don't don't be discouraged or, or not use it for any reason, Raymond. Right, thanks, John. I mean, I guess I, I don't know whether this is similar to um, like case reports, John, where. Um, you know, we might have what's the authorised report series like the Commonwealth Law Reports and then we've got the Australian Law Report series which is unauthorised but may be dealing with the same cases, reporting on the same cases. Yeah. I'm, look, I'm really not aware of um, instances, certainly in the Magistrates Court or the District Court where I practice primarily, where judges or magistrates respectively have taken issue um, they're, they're simply happy to receive the case. and um, um, But that may be different in the High Court jurisdiction or the Supreme Court jurisdictions. They may be more insistent upon the authorised material being provided. But uh, I, I don't think in practice it's um, a great concern. Excellent. Now that's good to know. <laughs> okay. So um, is there I anything... If, uh, oh, yeah, I wonder if you're able to give people a tip on how they should use their search engines if, for example, they're looking on uh, for, for case law in relation to, say, disqualification from admission as a practitioner, mm -hmm. um, you know, is there a, sort of a, a hint on how they should go about doing their searches? Do you, do you start with just a few words and expand, or do you, do you um, I, I, follow I a guess lead? I guess I tend to use fairly broad searches and then narrow it down. Um, I know that. Some people work better with making very targeted searches and um, broadening only if they they kind of aren't getting what they they need. Um, it's probably also using some of that functionality. Like I'm just thinking of say LexisNexis and how like we looked at the case, looked up particular case reports, um, but there's a lot of other options um, on that screen in that search box where you can sort of choose different, you know, limit to a particular legislation or limit to particular um, other fields. So I'm just wondering whether that might be a place to go as well. Yes. So a, a bit of it's trial and error really, isn't it? It's yeah, it is. And, and all of them are different. So it's, it's that kind of understanding that what works in one might not work in another. But certainly, um, I know it's a really, it's a kind of a basic sort of thing to say, but I find that if, you, if you're doing a lot of searching, it pays to actually, I, I'm a bit old school, I, I write, write my searches down. I know what I've, the keywords I've tried, I know the limits I've applied, and that way I can sort of, um, sort of what works here, then I might try it in another database. Um, and then I look at things like keywords that I might not have considered um, that might sort of have sort of triggered something and oh, I'll go back and I'll use those keywords in LexisNexis because I didn't use them that time. So it's sort of, um, it's not linear. It's not kind of you do one thing and then the next and then the next. It might be you do one thing and it leads you off to something else and then you might lead you back. So sorry, I didn't want to make people scared by that. But <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. And and of course, there is a real problem um, once you've found material that you need to read, whether it's legislation or case law. It's a question of how do you go about the process of reading it. Um, Practising in law and researching law is is hardly reading a novel where you start at the start and finish at the end, reading every word on the way through. 
Mm. There's a lot of um, a lot of change of pace in your reading. There's a lot of um, reading which initially is not exactly skim reading, but it's certainly speed reading, where you're looking at the overall context of the case. You're trying to get a feel for the case, and you and you're trying to identify the key words. But once you've narrowed in on a particular passage, for example, whether it's in the legislation or the case itself, which you think is on topic, the thing that you really need to know about, that's when you've got to slow your pace very, very much, almost to the point where you are laboriously reading every word and maybe reading it a, a few times, uh, being careful to look out for words which um, might provide exemptions or exclusions, such as words like if or unless or but, um, you know, which might change the context and uh, can be easily overlooked if you're reading too quickly at that stage. But if, mm. if you start to do your research thinking, well, I've got to read every word of this case, um, you, you'll just never get through the research. You, you've got to accelerate at times and, and be very selective. Mm. So it's a judgment call. I'm not, I'm not sure how I can better describe it than that. It, I guess it's one of those things that the more you do it, the better you become at, at sort of navigating that. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Kelly. That's all right. So <coughs> anything else that I can help with or no? Okay, well, brain. no. brain's a bit stopped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, what I'm hoping to do is... Um, um, do some work on the Law Library Guide and provide a lot of this information that we covered today. Um, so I will certainly let you know when that's available and um, if that's of help at all too. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Kelly. Kelly. No problem. Thank Thank you. Just before, before we finish the session, um, can I just do a quick round? Uh, does anyone have any questions that they wish to ask generally or about legal research specifically? Um, I have a question about the assignment. Um, it, it's yes. a general question. Just, <laughs> um, I hope it's not a silly question, but I was worried about the referencing. Should we use the referencing in this assignment? Because the questions are pretty straightforward, and if we're going to answer them, um, I guess we're going to have to reference in every each and each question. So, do you want us to reference or not? Yeah, I think um, referencing is great. It's not going to be critical in this very first assignment, but um, sure, why not get into the habit of referencing? Um, <laughs> just on that regard, I might ask Kelly if she has any tips on how to reference. Yes. Um, that was my second question. <laughs> yeah, thanks, what do we Carla. refer to when it comes? What do we refer to to when it comes to referencing? Because there's a lot of there's the Harvard referencing guide. There's the, I've seen a lot of referencing guides. So which one would would be the best or the easiest to use. We've got um, there's a link on the library law, sorry, the library law guide um, that actually has um, a link to the Australian legal citation. Yeah. Yep. So I I believe that is the one that um, in most law courses has to be used, John. Um, I think. Yes. I think there is an exception with one of the business law courses, but for the most part, it's that one. Um, so there is a link there, and I think if you go through, it's to the, um, I think it's the University of, excuse me, the University of Melbourne website, and you can actually download it. It's a, it's a very big, it's I think it's something like 300 pages. Um, it's quite a, a huge thing, but I suppose it's, I mean, this this assignment would be perfect to start you off on just getting. A feel for it um, before maybe it, it's more crucial down the track. Um, but yes, the link is there from the Law Library Guide. Okay. So Thank absolutely you yes, use use it. And um, if I think it's wrong, I'll, I'll let you know. If you'll get some comments without being marked. Yeah, down. that's what so I was worried give, about. You know, give I'm it worried a go. that if I reference in the wrong way. Um, it's our first assignment, and yes. if we reference the wrong way, will be will we be um, be accounted for plagiarism or something? Because <laughs> it's the very first time that we. <laughs> no, absolutely not. If you attempt to reference, you even if it's wrong, you can only you can only go up in your marks. You can't go down. Not on this first okay. assignment. I All did. Right, have... You, have, you have immunity. 
Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I actually had another student ask about that today, John, and um, we ended up between us discovering, and this might be something that other people know about, but discovering that um, um, Microsoft Word has a built-in footnoting ability yeah. as well. So that was actually quite nice because I think she was she was fearful that she would have to manually sort of put in these numbers and manage it. But if you go into Microsoft Word, I think it's under referencing and you can sort of add the footnotes and it's um, okay. it's much easier so than I expected. Oh, so, so you mean just putting in the, the, the insert footnote yeah, yeah, function yeah. where it drops it down? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. I was kind of assuming that people knew that, but um, no. now that's, I'm really pleased you raised that, Kelly, because that's very important. Um, and when when I'm writing QCAT judgments, we, we try to follow a familiar style and... Um, we, we go in the, the normal font is Arial 12 or Arial 12. And in the footnote, it's, it's typically smaller font. Um, we go to Arial 10 font and we tab across from the number. So does everyone know what Kelly's talking about with the function in Word, insert footnote? It's very, it does yes. make it a lot easier. Okay, that's a yes from Raymond. Uh, uh, yes, uh, John. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think no. I've been using it uh, on this assignment. Okay, good. Yes, please do. Give it a go. Thanks, mm. Kelly. I'll, I'll yeah. give it a go. If if I if I run into any problems, I'm going to call you, Kelly. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting, <laughs> but I'll certainly I'll certainly see if I can help. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that, Carla. Jackie, yes. do you have any questions or? Oh, sorry, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. Thanks, John. You're right. Thanks, Jackie. John, how about you? Any questions or comments? No, I'm. Uh... I said, the brain is completely overflowing at the moment. And, uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you, Ray. Right. Rachel, how are you doing? Fine, thanks. Uh, I've got a couple of quick questions. First one is the um, word count in our assignment. How pedantic is that on the 1500? And is the footnoting included in the words? Um, probably the answer would be no and yes. Um, not pedantic, particularly not the first one. Um, so if you go over the 1500, that's fine. You're not going to get marked down for that sort of stuff, not at the start anyway. And um, my view, the footnotes do count towards the word count. Can I just um, also mention this? I, I, I mentioned um, writing judgments for QCAT and uh, I had the privilege of being able to undertake an intensive uh, judgment writing course, which was... Um, convened by Justice Alan Wilson, who was at the time the president of QCAT. Um, and the whole tenor of that course was that in writing judgments, the trend now is going to be towards simplifying and reducing the number of words. So it's very easy, for example, when you're doing your research and collating your material to put together um, a lot of words. And by, by the time you look at your first draft, you might have three and a half thousand words on the page. But the key is then taking the time to reduce it. Now, if in your first draft you only have a 1,000, don't be stressed. That doesn't mean that you're off topic. But if you do find that you've got a lot more words, um, what, you, what you need to do is try to develop the skill to reduce the number of words down to a manageable amount and a readable amount if you can. Um, now, the quote that uh, was given to us at the start of that course was from an author, and I forget the name of the author, but it was, um, look, I'm sorry this, uh, writing to a friend, I'm sorry the letter is so long, but I didn't have time to write you a short letter. So the, the point of that is that it's easy to just keep rambling, as I'm doing now, but um, it takes more effort and probably more time to write in a very clear and concise manner. So um, thanks, Rachel. Any, any questions there, Rachel, or further comments? Well, just one other thing. Um, with the assignment three that we need to put up on our web page, we wouldn't yes. have to put that through Moodle yet, would we? No, you don't have to put that through yet. But uh, you're okay. talking about the blogs. You're talking about the yes. blogs. Yes. Yes. Look, I encourage everyone to blog away. You know, um, you, you really the assignment relies on everyone contributing information, so you can, in a sense, feed off each other. So. The more that we get there progressively, the better. Um, you don't have to put an entry in every week, but I think it's a good idea to do that if you can. 
Thanks, Okay, Raymond. thank you. Oh. Raymond, nothing from you? Uh, no, I'm right, thank you, John. Okay, Roxanne, anything, any questions or comments? No, no, this has been um, really informative. Okay, thanks, thank you. And thanks for, thanks for okay. joining us okay. tonight, Roxanne. All right, Kelly, look, I think that's everyone. So okay. Back to you, and thank you very much for hosting tonight. Oh, you're welcome, really no problem at all. That's really no hassle. It. And thanks. And thanks for the overtime. You better get back to your family. <laughs> oh, I'm only going back to kids. <laughs> Stay at work. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a, it's a break. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, um, I'll stop recording. And um, just please be aware that if, if you do strike any problems and I can help, just please get in contact. Thanks, Kelly. Appreciate it. No problem. See you all later. Thanks, Thanks Kelly. Bye. 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 Bye.